Hello, welcome to the Mark Janad Show, the cybersecurity show. In this video, I'm going to break down a various custom builds when it comes to the LoRa Mesh Tastic. So before I do that, please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. I appreciate you. So the first build I have for you is basically a custom off grid build using the Lily Go T beam, right? So you can create a powerful portable mesh radio nod for, in, you know, encrypted long range communication basically ideal for situations without cellular or internet coverage, right? So here's the approach, whether, you know, and this is going to be the custom build, you know, the hardware, the firmware, power and enclosure options, the hardware selection, you have the Lily Go T beam version 1.2 or Supreme. The latest versions, including the feature rich Supreme model offer ESP32 microcontroller, the LoRa, you know, whether it's the four, you know, 133, 868, 915 or the 923 megahertz GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and the, you know, the 0 0.96 inch, you know, OLED display. The battery, it uses a single 186.50, you know, the LI ion cell providing days of operation for indefinite off-grid use. You can pair it with a small solar panel, right? The antenna, you can choose the correct frequency for your region whether it's the, you know, 915 megahertz for the US, 868 megahertz for the EU. Now this is optional, but not optional, okay? There's the external GPS antenna for improved location accuracy and a power bank for extended runtime. The firmware and software, however, you have the Mestastic, Meshtastic, right? Which is the most power powerful, in my opinion, in the popular firmware for off-grid messaging. It supports encrypted communication like the AES 256, the GPS tracking and mesh networking. You have the flashing. It uses the official Meshtastic web flasher, right? Peter, you can put that on the screen, the link right there to basically to install or update the firmware. You have to hold the RST button while powering on to enter flash mode, then follow the prompts to select your device and region. In regards to configuration, after flashing, set your device name, region, and radio parameters via the Meshtastic app, which is available on Android, iOS, and desktop. This basically ensures your nod communicates with others in your mesh. Now, in regards to power and enclosure, the battery management, right? The T-Beam includes charging circuitry. That's the AXP192 or AXP2101, allowing safe recharging via USB or solar. The 3D printed cases are widely available and recommended for durability and weather resistance, right? Custom designs can accommodate additional modules like the card KB, right? The keyboards or the larger batteries. For true off-grid operation for solar integration, connect a small 5V solar panel to the USB input or use a solar charge controller with the battery. Now, to assemble it, solder the OLED, if not pre-installed, you know, attach the antenna, insert the battery and secure everything in your enclosure, right? Then place it in the field, right? Deploy it, right? Place the nods at high points for best range. Nods can be stationary, that's the relay, or mobile carried by users, right? But strategically place it, right? Strategic placement increases the mesh, mesh coverage. Now, in regards to customization and expansion, you can have add-ons like integrate sensors, external antennas, or keyboards for more functionality. There's OTA updates, modern firmware supports over the air updates, simplifying maintenance. There's community resources. There's numerous guides, printable case files and support forums exist for troubleshooting and enhancements. That's the first build guys. That is the first build. Now let's get into the second build, which is a RAK with block solar nod. That's the tree nod build. Right, and it's a popular solution for creating an off-grid solar-powered mustache nod, basically mounting on trees or remote uh, outdoor locations. So these, this build basically leverages the rack, you know, RAK Wisp Block Modular IoT system, and are designed for long-term maintenance-free operation using the solar energy and rechargeable batteries. Now, here are the components. You have the RAK with block core. That's the central processing and lower communication module, typically operating on sub gigahertz frequencies like the 915 or the 918 megahertz for US regions. There's solar charging. That's the integration of a solar panel, commonly 4W to 8W to keep the nod operational year round, even in mixed weather. 
The RAK-19012 or similar Wisp Block Power modules are often used supporting both LIPO battery and solar panel connections. There's a backup for the battery. Most builds use one or more 186 50 LI ion batteries or larger packs. Some nods feature up to 18,000 mAh capacity. So to ensure night and cloudy day operation. In regards to the enclosure, it's weatherproof, right? It's weatherproof. There's rugged cases, sometimes the 3D printed or military grade protect. The electronics from the elements making them suitable for tree mounting and harsh environments. Now the firmware, the nods runs Meshtastic, an open source firmware that enables LoRa based mesh networking to text and GPS data without cellular or internet connectivity. So the best practices for this is the polarity check. So when connecting batteries and solar panels ensure correct polarity to avoid damaging the WISP block board, then charge the controller. Some builds add an external smart charge a controller to improve battery longevity and handle deep discharge scenarios better than the basic wisp block onboard charger the mounting the nods are often suspended from trees and mounted high to maximize signal strength and solar exposure there are some community builds right so you there are designs and case files that are often shared in the mistastic community whether it's reddit discord etc with variants optimized for you know cold climates or specific terrains there are off the shelf options, pre-built nodes and kits are available from small makers and vendors, often including all required hardware, batteries, and antennas. Now, here's a build workflow. The WISP block core and LoRa module, the radio module on the WISP you know, block baseboard. That's number one. Then you have to add the WISP block power module. That's the RAK 19012 for battery and solar panel integration, then connect a suitable solar panel, that's the 4 to 8W, and one or more 18650 batteries ensuring correct polarity, then install the assembly in a waterproof enclosure, optionally, with a high grain antenna, then flash and configure the mesh-tastic firmware, set as a re basically a router or repeater as needed, then mount the nod in a tree or elevated outdoor location for optimal coverage and sunlight. This approach delivers a robust off-grid communication nod for rural emergency or outdoor mesh networks with proven reliability in 2025 deployments. That's the second build. Now here's the third build. We have an ESP32 Plus LoRa DIY node. That's the Hackaday Reddit build, right? Now, basically to start off, you have a typical off-grid ESP32 Plus LoRa DIY node build, right? which is basically inspired by the Reddit community Hackaday, right? Now, here's what you wanna do. Gather the hardware. You have two ESP32 LoRa boards, right? The ESP32 S3, the Power Feather, or the ESP32 LoRa version three with the SX1262 slash SX127X chip. Then you have the LoRa antennas. The power source is the LIPO slash LI ion battery, optionally with a solar panel for off-grid use. You can use up to 18 you know, V or 2A solar input. Optional but not optional, the GPS module slash wing for location features. You have the USB-C cables, which ensure data capability. Then you have to prepare the software environment. You have the Python 3.9 Plus installed on your computer. The Mestastic CLI, which is used for the flashing firmware and configuration. You can install in a Python virtual environment for you know, cleanliness. Then you have the Arduino IDE or ESP IDF for the custom code, if not using Meshtastic. Then assemble the code. You have the stack slash connect LoRa and GPS modules to the ESP32 board as per project schematic. Many open source designs use stackable wings. Wings, right? Then connect the battery and solar panel if off grid. You have the solar powered, then attach the antennas to LoRa modules for proper operation. Then you, there's the flash firmware, Mestastic. So download the latest firmware for your ESP32 LoRa board, right? Then use the Mestastic CLI to flash the firmware. Peter, please put that code on the screen. For custom projects, use Arduino IDE or ESP IDF to upload your code, right? Configure and test, right? Set the device parameters, region, channel, power, etc., via the Mestastic CLI or app. Then the mesh network, power on the multiple nodes to form an automatic mesh. The test connection or test communication is as goes. 
send messages or data between nodes, be you know, basically using the Mestastic app or CLI and deploy the off grid, right? So enclose the node in a weather resistant case for outdoor use, mount the solar panel in an op, you know, optimal location for sunlight, monitor the battery for solar performance. Many designs include the voltage slash the current monitoring, then deploy the nodes at desired locations to maximize the mesh coverage. Okay. Should I do it to you guys? The fourth build, huh? Should I do it to you guys? We have the M5 Stack Core 2 and the Laura 868 Module version 1.2, which is a highly feasible and well supported by the current open source projects like the Meshtastic, right? So here's what you should know. The core components is the M5 Stack Core 2, ESP32 based modular controller with touchscreen and battery. You have the module Laura 868 version 1.2, that's the Laura module, E22900M22S or the SX1262 chip operating in the 868 MHz ISM band, supporting up to the four kilometers range plus 22 D, you know, DBM transmit power and the 147 DBM receive sensitivity. So it uses an SPI interface and features DIP switches for flexible pin ass uh, assignment. There's the external SMA antenna included with the module for optimal range. Now, there's the firmware selection and flashing. So use Mestastic, which is basically an open source off-grid mesh communication firmware designed for LoRa hardware. You know, flash the firmware onto your M5 stack core using the M5 burner tool, which is official and cross-platform. The M5 burner provides a straightforward GUI for firmware uploads. Select the correct device and port, then burn the firmware. Then you know, stack the Laura 868 version 1.2 module onto the core to ensuring correct alignment of the pins. Set the dip switches on the Laura 868 module for the core 2 compatibility. For core 2, typically set long pins, that's the 257 and short pin 1, to on, then consult the latest dip switch guide for confirmation. Attach the external antenna securely to the SMA port, right? Once flash power on the device, the Mistastic logo should appear on the core 2 screen. Then configure the device settings, whether that's the frequency, the region, nod name, etc., via the Mestastic app, whether it's Android or iOS or desktop interface. Multiple devices can be meshed to form a robust off-grid communication network, right? So the use cases is basically where there is no internet or cellular required, you know, devices that are communicated directly via LoRa, forming a mesh network to text messaging and telemetry. So that's what I have for you today. Please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. If you like this video and you want more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and the like button right now. I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe. See you in the next video.